In this video, we're covering solving a word problem involving a sum or another basic relationship using a system of linear equations. So uh, for this particular problem, we have a French class has a total of 29 students. The number of females is nine less than the number of males. How many males and how many females are in the class? So essentially, a lot of times these problems uh, one sentence will give you one equation and another sentence will give you the other equation. And then, of course, it'll ask you a question. So if I examine this, this first sentence here says a French class has a total of 29 students. And then they go on to ask how many males and how many females there are. So essentially, we can come up with an equation where F is the number of females in the class, M is the number of males in the class, and together that should make the total 29 students. So F plus M would equal 29. That's our first equation in our system of equations. Now the second sentence also gives us another equation. So here it says the number of females is nine less than the number of males. So therefore the females is nine less than the number of males. Remember whenever you use the word than, it kind of swaps the order around that word then. So we know less means subtract, but it's not nine subtract M. Because of the word then, it's actually M subtract nine. And this is how you say, this is nine less than the number of males, okay? Once you have your two equations here, then it's just a matter of solving them whichever method you wanna solve them. Since I do have one variable already isolated, I went ahead and used the substitution method which means this expression will now replace the F. So the F becomes N minus nine. There's no exponent, no coefficient to distribute or exponent to apply. So N minus nine doesn't necessarily need those parentheses. So once I can write this expression without the parentheses, we can just combine our like terms to get two M and then we can re, uh, resume with solving for the variable M. So I added nine to both sides. I ended up with the equation 2m equal to 38. And then I divided both sides by two to get the m all by itself, resulting in that m equals 19. So now we know that the number of males is 19. So there's 19 males. Now, if you want to figure out how many females, remember this equation already had the females isolated. So essentially you can take that equation, f equal to m minus nine, and just plug in the M value that you found. So the M gets replaced by 19 and then 19 minus nine equals 10. So this means that there are 10 females. So 19 males, 10 females, again, just to double check, that does uh, come out to be the total 29 students, okay? And I do have some other examples because I noticed that there were different scenarios. So I have two more. This one says the sum of two numbers is 57. So remember that first sentence gives us an equation and sum means to add, right? So we're adding two numbers and it's gonna equal 57. And I think I have an error here, I put one. I'm gonna grab my purple pen, there we go. And we'll change this because it should have been 57. I think I didn't understand my own writing and I changed that problem, okay? So I will make the corrections when we get further along. Okay, so if that is our first equation, now how did I choose the letters? I paid attention to the rest of the paragraph. So it starts talking about the larger number and the smaller number. So then I used L for the larger number and then S for the smaller number. And so you're just adding the two numbers together. It wouldn't have mattered if you said small plus large or if you said large plus small, it's the same thing, right? We know addition is commutative, which means it, it doesn't matter the order, okay? So that does give me that top sentence does give me this first equation. The second sentence, this one here, the larger number is 21 more than the smaller number. That tells me the larger number is 21 more than, there's that word again, we know more means add, right? 
but because of the word and, the 21 goes behind the plus sign. So it looks like this. And then the smaller number would go in the front. So this is saying the larger number is 21 more than the smaller number. And the only reason why we have to go backwards is because of that word than. If that word than was not there, it would be 21 plus s, okay? So then now again, we have our two equations. Since one letter is already isolated, I do resort to substitution. So I replace the L with its equivalency, right? S plus 21. There's no coefficient to distribute. There's no exponent to apply. So we do not need those parentheses. I went ahead and combined my like terms. And then I resumed with trying to solve for S. So I minus 21 on both sides, which is going to give me 36. And then if I divide by 2 to isolate the x, I'm going to get that s is equal to 18. So remember, you already have an equation where you can calculate l very fairly easily. So it's just the smaller number plus 21. And we know that our smaller number is 18. So the result here is 39. And I should have caught my error had I had the right number here. I probably would have noticed it. But remember, it's a double check. So L is 39, which means the larger number is 39. And S was 18, which means the smaller number is 18. Be careful on Alex. Make sure you put the correct number in its correct spot. Otherwise, it will count you wrong. You have to do, redo another one, OK? Um, just make sure that these two, when you add them up together, they do total out to equal 57. That's kind of like your quick check. Now, here we have the sum of two numbers is 33. So again, that's going to give us our first sentence. So I'm going to add two numbers together. Um, I didn't know what letters to use just yet. But then when I read the second sentence, it says one number is two times as large as the other number. So we obviously have a smaller number and a bigger number. So I used S and L again, just like the previous example, where S is going to be the smaller number and then L is going to be the larger number. But we know from that first sentence that if we add them together, we get 33. Now, this one says one number is twice as large as the other number. So if you're talking about one number being twice as large, then that probably means you're talking about the bigger one. So I did put the L here. The larger number is two times the other number, which is the smaller number. Okay. It wouldn't make sense to do S equal two times L because if this number is bigger, when I double it, that means that the smaller number is bigger, okay? And that contradicts the ver verbiage of smaller number, right? So you definitely wanna make sure that you're putting the correct variable in the correct spot. And sometimes it just takes you to use a little bit of logic right there to decide which letter is supposed to go where, okay? Now two times S can just be written as two S, and again, since one of the variables is already isolated, I'm just going to use substitution and replace the L with 2s. Again, there's no coefficient to, to multiply here. There's no exponent to apply here. So the parentheses are not necessary. However, as you get further into this topic, sometimes there is a negative to distribute. Sometimes there is a power to apply. And so we have to make sure that you do that before you remove those parentheses. Never just substitute something in without putting it in parentheses initially. Once it's in parentheses, then you can decide whether or not it needs those parentheses or if they're unnecessary, okay? So once I had this, I went ahead and combined my like terms and I got three S. So to solve for S, I divided both sides by three and that resulted in S equaling 11. Now remember you have this formula here to calculate the larger number. So it's just two times S, which means two times 11, which is 22. So the larger number is 22, the smaller number is 11. And if you add those up together, you do end up with the 33 total.